That was it. Brenda Massey. What was the Number two. The median of those set of data is 98.6 and the mean is 98.5. Thinking of your body temperature. Kevin Rose. Who? Warren was 70% of the unfair bill. Kevin Wills. Yeah, we'll get to those. Chloe. Are we at the explaining how to do part part of this? Yes. We have the part where you have a blank piece to jot yourself some notes for Mr. Pence. Does that what we have, Daniel? Or am I just going to stand up here again, Danny, and talk to myself mindlessly? The mindless banter is terrible. Chloe, what you got? Number 11. Number 11, ladies and gentlemen. So it was a popular one on most people for Christmas. Chloe, did you look to see what, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the area of what, ma'am? Which is what type of shape, ma'am? And did you write down the formula for the area of a triangle? Yes. Which is? One half area, one half base. One half base times height. And then what do you know about the base and the height, Chloe? That's the key part of this whole triangle business. Base and the height have to do what or be what? Oh, so it didn't say length times width, it said base times height. River base and height have to be? Right. So you always, when they ask you for area of a triangle or even area of parallelograms, because parallelograms are base times height, you need to find where the shape gives you the square corner. See, Mr. Square Corner? That is the key, because those things, two things that form that are the base and the height. So the base and the height are this and this. This is not the height. And that's usually where people go wrong. Did you go wrong here? So note to self, don't do that in the future. So it's one half of 10 times 7. One half of 70 is 35. And that's why the area region for this was 35, or even inches squared. So Chloe, on tomorrow, when you take the test, you will not do that because you know. And the same thing, we might as well do number 10. The area of the shape, if it's a parallelogram, again, you're looking for that square corner. So it is area equal to base times height, 10 times 7. Somebody else read that wrong. Well, read that area. Somebody said E. Come on, fess up. Okay, so you got that figured out? You must, it must be the right angles. See, with rectangles, it doesn't matter because every side is a square corner. So that's why rectangles, it's really easy to just multiply the two numbers. So this, you have to spend some time thinking. Aiden? Can you do 16, please? Semi good chance I can do that. How many people out there in mathematical will have missed this one? Six. Sixteen, I'm sorry. Sixteen. Uh, hopefully you didn't miss the three part, did you? The two goes no, into six three know. times? Okay, that, I would say that would be part where, you know, those two need three. Now the issue comes when, number one, we have negative exponents. And the way to get rid of those negative exponents, Ephraim, is? All right, you just move the whole thing with its base to the bottom, it becomes x to the positive 2. Aiden, did you get that part? No, I didn't Well, there's your note to self. And then I don't know, whatever works for you on this, maybe it would be best for you if you just uh, factored all these out and you just put on top, I have y and y, two y's, and I have five x's, and on bottom I have x, two x's there and two x's there, x, 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 that gives me my four x's there and a y. Not forgetting I still have the three up there. And then you can cross them off one for one. You could do, you know, so here's one y crossing off of that y. 
1 x, 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 1 x. What are you left with? There's just a y and an x. Everything on the bottom crosses off, so it's a 1. You're left with 3 x, y. Does it matter if it's x, y, or y, x? It does not. The book will give the answers alphabetically, so they'll put the x, y, z just because it is. Maybe they'll put the highest in each one. Number 17 while we're there, anybody? So I don't have to push left. Can I do 17 first? Yes, sure. Do 17 first? Yes. River. This is where the issues come from. I do not enjoy negative exponents. So who is my person here? Brendan Mass. How do I get a negative exponent to go away with a fraction? You flip it. Yeah, it's the easiest thing in the world. Flip the fraction over, the exponent becomes positive. You just make this 2 thirds, and it becomes 2 thirds to the first power, which is 2 thirds. So now you have 3 halves minus 2 thirds. Mr. Common denominator is 6. 3 times 2, 2 times 2 is 4. 9 times 3 times 3 is 9. 9 6 minus 4 6 is 5 6. Lots of notes to selves to remember. 5, 6. And then Olivia said, let's do number 18. While we're standing here in the big jungle, uh, I know we went wrong with this one. How many people got this one wrong? Be proud, raise it high. Ellie, you got this one? Correct? Very good. How do you multiply scientific notation things together? Sam, the rule is? Uh, first you multiply the first three together. Yeah. You multiply the two lefts together, that's pretty easy. That's 12. You're going to write down your times 10. And then what do you do with the exponents when you multiply in scientific notation? You add them together. Hopefully you get this. What do you get when you have negative 4 and negative 3? 4 negatives, 3 negatives gives you 7 negatives. How many people put that as their answer? Mm -hmm. And then Brandon, Brandon, why is it wrong? Because you are you. This is correct up until this point. It's just incorrect because it's like a non-reduced fraction. You need to put this back into scientific notation, which means what has to happen? You need to move the decimal here to there, make it one point two. Here's the other tricky part to that. If you make this one smaller, you have to make this one larger. Negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. 7 negative is 1 positive. 6. How many of you have got that right? Don't yell at Kevin. I'm not sure which one which hands are up. Charles. Number eight. Eighteen, eight, five, what? Eight? eight. Charles, what did you get for an answer for number eight? First things first, Charlie, you must, have, you must know what slope intercept form is. Brady Sovereign, what is my generic form of slope intercept? Y equals what? Uh, I want numbers, I want letters. Y equals MX plus, plus what? just need to figure out, in order to, to do this problem, you need to figure out what the m is. And what do we call m? m is the slope of the line. And what is b? The y-intercept. So Charlie, you asked me this question. So here's your note to yourself. 
V is where it crosses the y-axis. If you're looking at this line here, Charlie, where does that line cross the y-axis? Right here at negative 1. This is the origin. So you know the letter V is going to be negative 1. You just need to figure out what the slope of the line is, and then you have the answer to that problem. How do I find the slope? Who's there? Lacey Robbins? Slope is? Rise over 1. Rise over 1. Make a triangle out of two points that cross those coordinates. This triangle is 1 high, and it is 2 wide. And you check to make sure it's positive or negative slope. It's going uphill, so it's positive slope, so it's a positive. So the whole answer to y equals 1 half x minus 1. Charles, did that help you out? Yes. You got some notes written for yourself, so on tomorrow's test you can. Ronnie. When you can do 13. Good chance. Ladies and gentlemen, problem number 13 causes us great confusion and issues because it's not on your sheet. We don't do 12 on there, but you are smart enough, you're strong enough, and you're fast enough to be able to do this. Ellie Norquist, how do I change 5 twelfths? I would change it probably. Well, it doesn't really matter, per se, first. Well, Ellie, did you get it right? What did you do first? Why did you do that? Did somebody tell you to do that? You can change anything to a percent. Ellie, you multiply by 100. If you just multiply anything by 100%, you will change it to a percentage. What do you get if you multiply this by 100? You get 500 over 12. And that will be your percent if you divide it out. Ephraim is scared of divide division, apparently. He gave me the big D guy right now. 12 goes into 500 how many times? It goes into 54. It goes into 20 how many times? Just once. And the nice thing is with percents, you can leave it in fraction form when you're done here. Subtract, you get 41 and 8 twelfths percent, which will be marked along simply because of what? Yeah, what is it reduced? and two-thirds percent. Somebody said 50 percent on that. And was... Now what about changing that to a decimal? Once you get to this, you should be able to change it to a decimal. Samuel? You wouldn't even, yeah, you could do that, but you've already, you've already done that here when you divided 12 into 500. So you really don't have to reinvent that wheel again. You can just do what? Move the decimal two places, Sam, and you'd get, here's the problem though, you get 41 and then you have a fraction with the decimal, which we don't like at all. How do I go from that to what the answer was? What is two-thirds as a decimal? 0.6 repeater, which is why when you do this as a decimal, it's 41, 6 repeater. You've already got the decimal there. You don't need to put a second decimal there because we wouldn't know what to do with two decimals on a number. Sometimes people go, ah. But occasionally there's an ooh. Not like a scary ooh. That's a bad Liv! Draw the pictures, sir? Yeah. All right. Vertical yardstick in the ground. How tall is that? One yard. Cast a shadow, how far, Liv? 24 inches. And then you have a 16 foot long shadow from this flagpole. Okay. What type of flag is it? Red, white, and or blue. And this is 16 feet long. Libby, did you get that far? 
I thought we did. I thought we did a lot of these problems, didn't we? Or something. Well, it really doesn't matter. Now, one issue you have right here is what? You can't have this. You can't have this in inches and this in yards. Okay, they both need to be the same. And since you probably don't want to change yard or inches into yards, because 24 inches is how many yards? Two thirds of a yard. Yeah, you probably don't want to do that. You want to take Nate, a yard is how many inches? 36. 36. So I would do that. And then once you get to that, you are doing your little ratio table. I've got the small triangle, I've got the big triangle. Wait, did we do this? I thought we did this. I got the height, then I got my shadow, and you just fill in the convertible blanks. Um, the height of the small triangle is 36 inches, the shadow is 24 inches. The height of the big triangle, I don't know. But I know the shadow is 16. We just have to figure out H. Is there an easy way to do this? I don't know. What would you do, anybody? 34, 36, 24? Yeah, I see that. It's getting a little blurry on me. I'd reduce that fraction to what? What number goes to 36 and 24? Six. How about 12? This would be 3 halves, right? 2 times what is 16? Eight. 3 times 8 is 24. And 24 is in how many feet? 24 feet. I wonder about coffee cups. Does that help, Lev? Yeah. I'm surprised nobody asked that number four. Nobody asked four? Kevin Will. Six? Did you intentionally skip the one that was asking you to ask one? You want six, right? No, maybe six. No. Was the length of a diagonal of a rectangle that is 24 inches by 10 inches? So you drew this rectangle, Kev? Wait, you did or didn't? I drew. I thought this went without being said. Okay. You know what a diagonal is, sir? Huh? Diagonal is what? Line that goes through opposite corners. Here's a diagonal. <laughs> Did that, does that help you? They just want to know what this length is, which means you have what? A 10, 24 right angle, triangle. Is there a Pythagorean triple that is a 10, 24? <laughs> Some of the little birdies in the sky. <coughs> yeah, you need to see if this is a smaller ratio. If you cut them in half, you get a 12 5 triangle. Is there a 12 5? 5 12. Yeah. 5 12. This one is, and Danny will tell you one important thing is 13 is not the answer. Why, Danny? Because. Yeah, that's. Yeah, since you cut these in half, you get to the small one, you have to double it to get to the big one. Did that help us? Kev, did you get that done? When Aiden says four, did you say four, Aiden? Yeah, I got it. Oh, you got it right, but you just want to see me do it. Yeah, that way you don't have to do Tax and tip is always, yeah, you want 7 and 1 half percent of $164. The question is, what is 7 and a half percent? Well, 7 percent is 0.07, then a half a percent is, you get a stick of 5 on it, because the decimal equivalent for 5 is, or for half is 0.5. 1.75 times 164 bucks. If you were guessing about how much money is, let's just say 7% of $160, what is a reasonable guess? If you're paying $7 for every 100, that's 7%, 7 out of 100. What would be a good guess, Charlie, for 7% of 164? Oh, 
Charlotte, what are you thinking? Seven dollars for every hundred that you pay in tax to get seven percent. But you're paying a hundred you have hundred and sixty four dollars, but what's a good guess? It's just a guess, Charlie. You can't be wrong unless you say seven hundred dollars. That would be probably wrong. But, huh? Charlie says twelve bucks and I'm gonna say I think that's probably about probably gonna be close. Hundred and sixty four dollars times point oh seven five is twenty two thirty two three eight zero twenty eight two fourteen four four eleven. Charlie, did you do this before? I get twelve thousand three hundred dollars, Charlie. How could your guess have been so far off? Huh? Oh, I didn't move the decimal. How many places, Charlie? Three, yeah. From here to here. So it's twelve dollars thirty cents. Checking up on you, Charlie. Checking up on you. Why? Brendan Massey, why? Seven? Is that up here? Is that what you were going to ask? What else? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, inequalities are the exact same thing as equations, except they're different. Does make any sense to you? Sam, you solve it the same way. I need to get x by itself over here. So how do I get rid of an adding to? You subtract 2. And watch, it's just that easy. If I subtract 2 from 3, I end up with a big fat 1. X is less than 1. I'm not sure how it could get any easier than that. Add 1, you need at least to put the number there. Why is it not a closed circle? Because it doesn't have an equal sign under it. And it's all numbers less than 1, so it goes this direction. Which again, let me reiterate. Notice how this and this have the same direction, shape, and everything. Mr. Kevin Wells. I already did that. Say, uh, what? 12. Did I do 9? I thought I did 9. No, I did not. Do I 12? Yeah. Did I do something wrong? I hear whispering in the background. Yeah, it's really good. He says the line is Are we talking about whether we should plant corn or beans this year? <laughs> no. Is it the every other year rotation? This is beans. Some people do that. Oh, you don't? You go corn on corn? No, but some people do corn on corn. We switch. Not all of our. We don't just have corn one year. We have corn and beans. That way, if the corn prices are horrible, we still have beans. So you plant one whole corn and like, how does that work in the planter? You can't put corn and beans no, in the same field. It's corn on the other field. You ever try doing one row of corn, one row of beans, just to see how that would look? I just not. But you said if the line is under the greater than sign, then you have the closed circle, right? Yes. Okay, that means equal to. Line under the, could be that or equal to. Wait, where did it? Am I missing the shape? Is the shape up here? Yeah, it is at the time. No, how am I supposed to do all that? These people are not thinking. The second two. The two? Uh, if the measure of angle B, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about this a while ago, and it doesn't come up a lot. If the angle B is 61 degrees, let's just pop that bad boy up and look at it. We talked about the characteristics of a parallelogram are these. Number one rule is that the opposite angles are equal. If this is 61 degrees, this is also 61 degrees. And then how would I figure out what this angle here is or this angle here is? There's a couple different things you can think about. Number one, in any four-sided shape, the inside angles have to be four sides. Think of a rectangle. If you have four 90-degree angles, how many angles degrees is that? This thing here also has 360 degrees. I've already used 122 of them, which gives me what? Eight. 238, 238 degrees. Hey, that ain't right, is it? Yeah, and they both have to be equal because they are opposite, so you could divide them by two. Is there another way, 119 degrees, is there another way that you would know what those are without doing that? 
In addition to opposite angles being equal, there is also a relationship between these adjacent angles. Angle A and angle B are what we call, uh -oh. yeah, they're called supplementary. These two angles have to be 180 degrees. So you could have just taken 180 degrees minus the 61 degrees and you get your 180 degrees. So many notes. Oh, we've got 10 minutes left. Did I do something wrong? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Number 10? We did number 10. We did. I said, but as I did 11, which is a triangle, I said, you also use in a parallelogram that right angle tells you two lines will multiply the other 10 in a second. Base time. Oh, I have to form right angles. Ellie Norquist. 15. Oh, let me do that. This book always tries to trick you, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, this, anything to the zero power is? Ellie? Did you put one? Ellie? Is that a yes or no? She said yeah. How about three to the first power, Ellie Norquist? Three. Two to the second power? Four. And one to the third power. Well, there's a negative in front of it, so it's a negative one. Did you get negative one? So I will tell you, looking at this, Ellie, you have a positive one and a negative one. They're a wash. They go away. So you just left with 3 plus 4, which is, although we probably should stick with order of operations, right, and go from left to right. It doesn't make any difference, but it's all the same. You have 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8, 3 minus 1 is 7. Oh, boy. It's all in a nice little row here. The rest of you got all the rest of these right. We got Charles. Um, you need to number five. I wonder if I didn't already do it. Two, three, four, five. Oh, is this a speedometer? The speedometer on Murray's car shows that the speed of both miles per hour and kilometers per hour using 1.6 kilometers as an equivalent for one mile. Find the mile per hour rate that is equivalent to 80 kilometers per hour. Wow. Charles, this is what we call what? This is a unit multiplier slash conversion ratio thing. Why is this not going smaller? There we go. Charlie, when we do these, the most important thing is what? Help me out here, Charlie. When we talk unit multipliers and conversion fractions, what's the most important thing? Labels. Thank you. Did you use labels? Uh, yes. All right. So we started with this. This is what we start with, right? Which is what? 80 kilometers, the word per hour. Did you start with this, Charles? Is that what I'm given? 80 kilometers per hour. Now, Charles, what do I want to change it? I want to go from kilometers to hour to what per hour? Charlie? Miles. Miles per hour. So what label has to change? Kilometer. So where do I have to put it? On the bottom. Put it on the and miles go on top. Do you, Charlie, know how many kilometers are in a mile or how many miles are in a kilometer? No, but it tells you, does it not? Yeah. Right here, what's this say? 1.6. Yeah, 1.6 kilometers is one mile. So where does that go? The 1.6 goes here, is one mile. And then look what happens. So the beauty of only mathematics, what am I going to do? 80 divided by 1.6 miles per hour. I'll do it over here. 80 divided by 1.6. By the way, you're going a lot faster in the metric system. You get to go like 100 miles an hour in the metric system, or 100 kilometers per hour, and that's not that fast. So, Charles, I move this over. Decimal goes way over here. Uh, 1.6 goes into 80, what? Five times. I'm guessing you're going 50 miles an hour. I'm not guessing. I know you're going 50 miles an hour. Does that help, Charles? Olivia. Number 20. Number 20. Okay. 
Oh, you know why I like to ask for this one? Anybody know why I like this one? Because I get to ask for the 23rd time this year. I'll tell you what. Yeah, at the end. So, huh? Did you put the multiply at the end? So, what's the first thing I get rid of is? Adding three fourths, and the opposite of that is subtracting three fourths. I do that on both sides. I end up with what is three fourths? Six eighths. Did you? So you got three eighths here, eleven, and you got that equals seven eighths x. And then you did flip and multiply, huh? And it was eight sevens. This was eight sevens. Uh oh, apparently we've come to an awkward time stage. These go away, you're left with x. These actually cross off, and you're left with 3 over 7. 3 sevens. Actually, you will. 3 sevens. Can you just, can you like, keep it the same and multiply? No. Oh, you flipped and multiplied the wrong side. Brendan Massey. Can you do 19? Again, love to do 19. Brendan, this is probably where you went wrong in number 19. Usually, the book puts the x term first and the other term second. Did you subtract this? Oh. Yeah, see, that's what. Usually, they write it like this 0.2x plus 0.8 equals 1.2. You always want to deal with a term that doesn't have the x first. I want to get rid of the point 0.8 first, so I subtract point 0.8, subtract the point 0.8, and that is point 0.4. Is that what you did, Brendan? Yeah. Yeah, see that's, and there's why you're going to leave yourself a giant note for tomorrow. You divide point 0.4 by point 0.2, you end up with, I'll take that too, I hope. Just about all the cows. Um, right off the bat, number one. Did somebody say something about number one before? Charlie, did you give yourself a little percent box, sir? Is that yes or no? No. Well, that's what you got to do. You got your percent, you got your actual. The bill is divided into what two parts? Parts for parts, parts for labor. If you take the parts and you add the labor, you get the total bill, right? You with me? Charlie? How much were the parts? How much were the labor? The whole bill was 120, right? $36 was for? Charles? Parts. Parts. How much for labor then? You do that math. What is that? How about $84, isn't it? You subtract 36 from 120, you get 84. What percent do I know? Do I know the parts percent, the labor percent, or the total percent? Charles? What's my total percent always? Right. And then what am I asked for? I want the labor part. I want this part right here. So what number over 100 is 84 over 120? Charlie, how am I going to solve that one? Any ideas? Anybody? No, I'm on this. This one looks like it's a little too deep for me. Brennan? No idea? What? Sam? What would you do if you're doing this? Sam? What? Did you ask? I said, how am I going to do this problem? It's too hard for me. Uh, um, uh, cut them both in half. What do you get? Uh, 42 over 60. That doesn't seem to help me much. Um, what goes into 42 and 60? How about six? six? Yeah, we get seven over ten. Oh, that helps me. So instead of this part, I have seven tenths. How do I go from ten to a hundred? Multiply by the Amazon smile. 
and seven times the Amazon smile is. Is it just me, Charles? Did I lose you? If you didn't like to do that, you could just cross multiply and do the cross products thing. But to me, that seems a bit on the uh, more complicated part there. Thirty seconds or less, Charlie. I didn't do two yet. But what part of number two didn't you get right, Charlie? So you added them together and divided by one, two, three, four, five, and did not get the right answer. I'm going to have you do that again because I think that's something you can probably do. The second one they asked you for was the the median. What important thing, Charlie? Do you have to do to find the median of numbers? Did you? You did, and you still got it wrong. You did this first. And this? And this? I'm going to do this chart, but I'm not sure how you could get that wrong if you did all that. You actually did this. And then 99.0 and 99.2. You have those five numbers, Charlie. What number's in the middle, sir? And was that not what the answer was? What's up? Did I, did I say 98.6? Charlie, I can't. What? Aiden, stop, right? All right, boys and girls.